comes out. Yeah. Renzo B. Real early in the morning Another day to fulfill my calling Phone line ringing, there's a few brothers calling Evangelism on a Saturday Follow up, bring them to church the next day Yeah, yeah. Evangelism on a Saturday Next day is Sunday, we give him all the praise Yeah, yeah, yeah you see, I give him all the praise, yeah I'm trying to win a soul on Saturday, yeah I've been following up people all week On Sunday, securing five seats for my peeps Cause I'm trying to get him closer to the Lord So that one day they can receive a reward In the house of God, I promise you will not be bored See, you will not be bored, wait Have you given your life to the Lord? You must be born again Once you do this, you must go tell a friend Surround yourself with people that can pray And through the whole week, they're doing all they can To save a friend, yeah, yeah Chilling at the barbecue setting, put our guns out, we're spraying. At the end, the spirit came in, cause souls need saving. It's your soul need saving. I said, your soul need saving, cause the sun's out and I'm yawning. Woke up real early in the morning. Another day to fulfill my calling. Phone line ringing, there's a few brothers calling. Evangelism on a Saturday. Follow up, bringing them to church the next day. Yeah, yeah. Evangelism on a Saturday. Next day is Sunday, we give them all the praise. Yeah, yeah. Some souls, yeah, yeah. I can see the sun is shining, see the love of God is blinding. Grab the soul so they can find him, yeah, yeah. Lord, I get a glory, and anything I want, Lord, you do it for me. Lord, I know you in control, I surround my story. I'm laboring for you, cause I ain't no Tory. Na, 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 na. God willing, get another soul so the kingdom winning. Do a note of cool so their sins forgiven. Now they in touch with the Holy Spirit. Na, na, na. na. Evangelizing, now we're doing up work, the church is rising. See, we filling up church, it ain't surprising. Sun's out, souls are letting Christ in. Yeah. Yeah, the sun's out and I'm yawning. Woke up real early in the morning. Another day to fulfill my calling. Phone line ringing, there's a few brothers calling. Evangelism on a Saturday. Follow up, bringing them to church the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evangelism on a Saturday. Next day is Sunday, we give them all the praise. Yeah, yeah. Saturday's a time to win a soul, see See me and my brothers, yeah, we soul see. see his presence, yeah, it's holy The grace that he showed me, so I walk in faith and I proceed Yeah, we go proceed Enjoy life and stay holy Fellowship, never stay lonely I can never be lonely See, my Lord is so funny I can see his light shine on See the me. sun's out and I'm yawning Woke up real early in the morning Another day to fulfill my calling Phone line ringing, there's a few brothers calling Evangelism on a Saturday Follow up, bring them to church the next day Yeah, yeah, yeah Evangelism on a Saturday Next day is Sunday, we give them all the praise Yeah, yeah, yeah Special. I don't know what I did to get 
morning to you come on you know I'm gonna wait on you to say it back put great morning in the chat for me all right good morning everybody and as always it is definitely my honor to gather right here with each and every one of you now I want to take a moment out to say thank you to everyone who came out and participated yesterday in our toys and tacos event your gifts are truly appreciated and we hope your tummies enjoyed those yummy tacos too so let's get into this week's announcements. On this Tuesday, wake up at 6 a.m. and dial in with us for our corporate prayer. Again, 6 a.m. dial in for corporate prayer this Tuesday. Of course, we're still bringing you our virtual Bible study every Wednesday at noon. And if you can't make it to noonday Bible study, join us right back here in this safe virtual space at 7.14 p.m. every Wednesday. Have you been doing your kingdom work by giving? Whether your answer is yes or no, no worries. We've made it convenient for you to continue doing our faithful giving. And guys, our faithful giving is what allows us to do what we do. So give online, give via your phone, you can text to give, whatever works for you. You've still got time to complete your census. Remember the deadline is October the 30th, so get it done. All right, we're almost done with this week's announcements. Pastor Spence is bringing us part two of his sermon series titled Overwhelm. But of course, before Pastor comes, let's join in with our very own praise team for a little praise and worship. So come on guys, let's go. We don't want to be late.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Ooh, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. And I'm pressing towards you, oh God. Let's just lift our hands and press into his presence. Be intentional about meeting him where he is. Oh, right here in your presence. Hey, yeah. If I can just press, press in your presence. Behold the beauty of your face. If I can just press. Press in your presence and never leave this place again. If I could just press, oh, press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me. I will be whole. I still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet. I will be whole. I still believe. Just praise, praise out of your feet Right here in your presence Hallelujah, yeah Right here in your presence Come on ladies If I could just, if I could just press Press in your presence, your presence Behold the beauty of your face If I can just press Press in your presence And never leave this place again If I can just press Press in your presence And leave all my cares behind me I will be whole I still believe I will just lie Lay out of your feet
let's worship. Come on and send up a worship to the Lord. Take my soul right here. Good morning and God bless you. Wow, man, we in the second Sunday of October. This year is really, oh man, next thing we know is going to be Thanksgiving, Christmas, all of that kind of good stuff. But listen, any day that the Lord bless you with is a good day. And remember, your testimony is simply this. I'm still here. If God has kept you, go ahead and put some emojis in, in the comments to just let God know that you thank him, you appreciate him for all that he's done for you. Uh, once again, I'm so thankful for our praise and worship team every Sunday. They knock it out of the park. They get us exactly to where we need to be, and I'm thankful for that. They've been faithful this entire year. Would you go ahead and show them some love in the comments? I'm so excited to have a team that just believes in what we're attempting to do. Now, listen, uh, we're getting closer and closer. Y'all know what we're getting closer to. As a matter of fact, tomorrow... In my municipality, in my county, in my city, voting starts tomorrow. Voting starts tomorrow. Early voting, early voting, V-O-T-E. I need for you to early vote. Listen, I, I know election day is November 3rd, but I can't even afford for you to take a chance. You may have a blowout. You may get sick. Anything could happen. Go ahead now while you have the opportunity. I'm, I'm feeling so good about voting. I may, after I finish preaching, I may just go to the local polling station and just camp out all night. I'm gonna see if I can talk lean lady into going camping with me and we'll just camp out at the polling station because I'm voting on the first day. And when you vote, show me your peach, post your peach. I need to see your peach to let me know that you've been responsible and you voted well listen last week i preached myself happy somebody shout it is well yes that was a good word we talked about being overwhelmed i've been overwhelmed this year you've been overwhelmed this year and we just got to know that instead of us responding to the problem problem we got to respond or re respond to the prophecy that's already been spoken over our lives and how many believe that every word that god has spoken over your life it will come to pass. I feel it already this Sunday morning. Somebody shout, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. It is well. I want to go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. And I want to go one verse down from where we left off on last week. So last week, remember, her son died on her lap at noon. She took him up to the room that she had built for the prophet. And she says, I'm going to see the prophet and I'll be back. Her husband asked the question, hey, where you going? Anybody at the church today? And she didn't even engage with the question that he asked. She just simply said, it is well. And we talked about how to respond prophetically to what God is doing in your life. She felt overwhelmed. I'm sure she was overwhelmed. I'm sure her situation looked pretty dim. But she had enough faith to declare and decree, it is well. As we drop down one verse, in verse 24, 2 Kings from the New King James Version of the Bible, then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, y'all listen to what she said. First thing she says, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. Drive, go forward, and don't slack. Drive, go forward, and don't slack. Drive, go forward, and don't slack. Oh, that's a good place for you to give God a praise right there. If you feel like there's a destiny with your name on it, somebody shout, drive, go forward, and don't slack. Oh, man, maybe somebody need to give that to the coaches of the Atlanta Falcons because they need to drive, go forward, and don't slack. I want to help you this Sunday morning. I want to talk about dispositional direction. Dispositional direction direction for part two of our sermon series overwhelm dispositional direction drive go forward 
and don't slack. I feel that in my spirit and as we close out this year of 2020, as we're into this last quarter of the year, I believe those words are fitting for us. Drive, go forward, and don't slack. You know, last week we talked about being overwhelmed, how to be in deep over your head, how it seems like there's this huge mass that's trying to bury you, that's coming in on you like a flood. I'm so thankful this Sunday morning that we serve a God that reminded us that when the enemy does attempt to come in like a flood, that God will raise up a standard on our behalf. And I believe that standard, if we look into this 2 Kings chapter 4 passage of scripture in verse 24, this lady is completely overwhelmed. This wife, this mother who just recently lost her son, watched her prophetic promise die at noon. Here it is, she's overwhelmed and she's trying to figure a way out of it and all she could say was, it was well. After she said those words that we've been saying all week long, it is well, she then saddled her donkey and told the servant that was at the control of the reins to drive, go forward, and don't slack. She was overwhelmed and I'm telling you sometimes in life we try to figure out what God is doing in our life. And I believe that those are the times you're going to find yourself completely overwhelmed. I want to say it this way. Being overwhelmed is often the result of your mind being in a wrestling match with God's will. It is that moment when you just don't understand what God is doing. Can we just have a little therapy this Sunday morning? A little group counseling? Has anybody ever been there where you don't understand what God is doing? It's like your mind is in a wrestling match with God's will. Now, God, I know you didn't tell me to move to this city and for all this hell to start breaking loose in my life. God, I took a step on faith. I moved according to your word. Now, God, here it is. I got all of this stuff going on around me. I don't understand it. Now, God, I know you didn't mean for me to marry this many people. I'm on my fifth marriage, God. I don't understand what it is that you're doing. It's when your mind starts to wrestling with God's will for your life. And so many times we, in life, we become the product of our choices and our consequences catch up with us. And sometimes we don't understand what God is doing in our lives. And whenever our minds start to wrestle with God's will. Now, God, I'm on this job. I was sure this was the job that I was supposed to take. But what if that was not the job? you were supposed to take and what if you find yourself in a situation of predicament and what if you mess around and marry somebody that was not in God's will and plan for your life now you're in a frustrated marriage now you feel overwhelmed you don't even want to come home in the evening and it's all because you allow your mind to get engaged in a wrestling match with God's will and there are times in our lives where we try to superimpose our will on God's will we can want things and stuff so bad that we can try to attempt to superimpose those things on God's will for our life. And then when it blows up in our face, we're left feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes life can be tricky. Sometimes life can be tough. And we make moves. They can be good moves, but not necessarily God moves. And in this last quarter of the year, you can't afford to just make good moves. You need to make God moves. And you're going to always find yourself feeling overwhelmed whenever your mind is in a wrestling match with God's will. Can I, can I help you, my friend? The best thing you can do in life is to submit yourself completely to God's will for your life. God, not my will, but let your will be done. Those were the words that Jesus said while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And maybe those are the words that somebody needs to say this Sunday morning. Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Drive, go forward, and do not slack. Well, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. Drive, go forward, and do not slack. But you also told us you were going to talk about this positional direction. Can you please make the connection for us? Well, I'm certainly glad to make that connection for you this Sunday morning because this positional direction is so important. And when we look at that word dispositional, I want to look at the root of the word, which is disposition. And a proper disposition will keep you headed in the right direction. And my question to you this Sunday morning is, are you headed 
in the right direction? And do you have the right disposition? For so many people that are streaming with us this Sunday morning, one of the reasons we may be feeling overwhelmed could be because we're not headed in the right direction. What if we're moving in the opposite direction from which God called us to move? This woman is clear about where she's going. She told her husband that I'm going to see the man of God and I'm coming back. My direction now is to go to Mount Carmel. I got to find this prophet that prophesied to me. I need to go find this man of God and when I get him, I'm coming back. I believe that her disposition placed her in the right direction. And maybe I need to talk to somebody this Sunday morning. Maybe your disposition has you headed in the wrong direction. See, I've come to the conclusion in life, no matter what you deal with, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what kind of problem that you're facing right now, no matter what kind of challenge you have going on in your life, no matter what kind of difficulty you're dealing with right now, I've come to this one conclusion that my inward disposition has to be greater than my outward circumstance. Let me say that again. Your inward disposition has to be greater than your outward circumstance. Yes, I know what you're facing right now is nothing to sneeze at. It's nothing to laugh at. But what I'm telling you, your inward disposition has to be greater. That's why our Bible teaches us that greater is he that is in us. There ought to be something in us and there ought to be something in our attitudes. There ought to be something in our disposition that will let us know that no matter what we're facing outwardly, we can overcome it inwardly. Your dispositional direction determines where you end up in life. Your disposition is the way in which something is placed or arranged, especially in relation to other things. I want you to catch that. Disposition is the way in which something is placed or arranged, especially in relation to other things. What, what is out of order in your life? What is not properly arranged? And so many times our disposition, our attitudes, our inward feelings, our inward emotions, sometimes they're misplaced and they're not properly arranged. And whenever we allow these things to get out of order, it tends to take us in the wrong direction. See, I believe that your disposition, catch this class, is the predominant or prevailing mental and emotional outlook, mood, and attitude that you possess. It's that predominant. Or that prevailing. Have you ever met some people that they just have a negative outlook on life? No matter what you tell them, they always look for the negative in any particular situation. There, there are people right here, right now, that you haven't moved since March all the way to October because your disposition is inwardly negative. You look for the worst. You think the worst and because you think those things often the worst shows up in your life and I'm here to tell you this morning that if you're going to change your situation you must first start by changing your inward disposition it is that predominant prevalence see some of us just have a poverty mindset some of us just believe that we're going to always be broke but I need to find out if there are any believers that are streaming with me that believe that you will see the goodness of the Lord right here in the land of the living. If you believe that you're going to see his goodness, why don't you just go ahead and give him a praise this Sunday morning? Give him a praise in the comments. Give him a praise right there in your living room. Just give God praise because you still believe. See, it is your disposition, that emotional outlook, that mood, that attitude. And some of us are an emotional wreck. We get upset because people don't like our posts on Facebook. We get upset because people don't share our good news. We get upset because people don't joy and get excited with us when we think they should be joyful and getting excited with us. We put so much stock into what other people think about us that sometimes it affects our inward disposition. It is that emotional outlook. And now, therefore, I find myself in a bad mood. And many times that's that mood of being overwhelmed. I've allowed my inward disposition. I've allowed my inward attitude to get the best of me. And I'm so thankful this Sunday morning that we can look at this lady that's had an outward circumstance that would have took most of us out. But her inward disposition wouldn't let her get down. Her inward disposition wouldn't let her stay where she was. She simply said, it is well. She told the driver of the donkey, drive. 
go forward and don't you dare slack. She had the disposition that her situation was going to change and because she possessed the power of dispositional direction. She gave clearly three clear cut directions. Drive, go forward and don't slack. And in that second part, when we look at this positional direction, we've looked at this position, but now let's look at direction. When I look at the word direction, I see direction is the course or path along which someone or something moves. It is that course. It is that path. You know, our Bible tells us that there is a path that we think is right, but oftentimes that path leads us into the wrong direction. So direction is the course or path along which someone or something moves. Direction is also the management or guidance of someone or something. As you navigate through this thing called life, you need directions. When God left us his holy word, we really could look at his book of the Bible as a book of directions. He's given us all of the tools and all of the instruments that we need to be successful in this thing called life. God wants for us to be on the path that he has charted out for us. That's why the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 4 and 20, 23, guard your heart with all diligence because it charts the course of our lives. It's important for us to understand this Sunday morning and maybe we should ask ourselves just these two simple questions. Are you on the right course and are you under the right management? For many of us, we're going to find out that this entire 2020, we've been on the wrong course. We've been on the wrong path. We've been chasing after the wrong things. We've been pursuing the wrong things. And maybe this Sunday, God has called me into this sanctuary to tell you that you need to get on the right course. And once you get under the right course, you need to figure out, are you under the right management? Isn't it amazing how a team in sports can be talented, but a team can underperform when there's a lack of management? I don't know why I'm talking about my fans this Sunday morning, but we've been talking for years how they are the most talented, one of the most talented teams in the league. But it seems like we just can't get right. And I've come to the conclusion, maybe we're not under the right management and maybe in this season of your life if 2020 is going to close out for a bang for you you got to make sure that you're under the right management you got to make sure that you're under the right management you got to make sure that you got the right people speaking into your life you got to make sure that you're connected and you're still plugged to the voice of god you got to make sure that you are going on the right path and that your Direction is being properly managed. It's key for us. It's critical for us. And I want to give you three dispositional directions that I see that this young lady gave the servant in the text. She said, drive, go forward. Don't slack. Somebody said that with me. I like that. That may be a t-shirt later. Drive, go forward, and don't slack. Those are the three dispositional directions that she gave. And the very first thing that she talked about when she said drive, I believe she was just announcing that I am in radical pursuit. Come on, can somebody drop that in the comments? Radical pursuit, radical pursuit. She directed the servant to drive. Drive means to control both direction and speed. She speaks to him and says, now I need you to go toward Mount Carmel and I need for you to keep the rate of speed that I'm telling you. She says, in other words, what I'm going after is so important to me that I need for you to understand that I am in radical Pursuit. When I hear that word radical, when I hear that word radical, it means to mean three things, unorthodox, unusual, and unbothered. You know, she has every reason to be bothered. She has every reason to be crying uncontrollably. But she says, what well, I'm going after, I left something up in the upstairs bedroom that's precious to me. And I'm going to get help for my particular situation. And how many of you know that when you need help, you got to be radical in your approach? I'm thankful this Sunday morning that this woman was unorthodox in her approach. She was unusual in her approach. But most of all, she was, uh, she was unbothered. I need for the people that need for change to show up in your life. I need for you to show God some sign that you are willing to be radical. As a matter of fact, there ought to be somebody that ought to just walk outside in the front yard and shout, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall forever be in my mouth. I can't sit here with a bunch of dignified saints this Sunday morning. I need to see the people that are going to be unarmed 
unorthodox, unusual, and unbothered in this last quarter of the year. She was in radical pursuit. I need for you to understand that that word pursuit means to go after. I don't know what the devil took from you. I don't know what he tried to steal from you. But in this last quarter, you got to pursue it. You got to go after it. And you can't go after it being cute. You got to be radical. Why don't you get radical in your praise and take back everything that the devil is stole from you. If he took your joy, I need for you to snatch it back this Sunday morning because the joy of the Lord is your strength. She was in radical pursuit. She said drive, but not only did she say drive, she says go forward, go forward. I call that a resilient pursuit. She directed the servant to go forward, and I believe in her head that backwards is not an option. In this last quarter of this year, it's been extremely tough and challenging. I need for somebody to type right now in the comments, that backwards is not an option. She told him to drive, go forward, because going back to my dead son right now is not an option. I'm not going back to those dead things that are in my life. I need for you to let the dead things that are in your life, you need to depart from them in this season and go toward God. Go toward the man of God so you can receive the manifestation of God. She was resilient in her pursuit. She directed the servant to go forward because backwards is not an option. I need for somebody that believes that your bank account is as low as it ever will be again. From this day forward, you're not going backwards. You're going to drive and you're going to go forward. How many of you believe that your better days are still ahead of you? Would you give God a drive and go forward praise because you believe that what's in front of you is better than what's behind you? She was resilient in her pursuit. You know that word resilient means to be able to withstand or recover quickly. It is that ability to bounce back. I wanna give you that definition for resilient because some of you are more resilient than you think you are. This is not the first time that you've had trouble to show up in your life. I need to take you back to the time where you thought you weren't gonna make it, to the time that you thought that thing was gonna take you out. But resilient means to be able to withstand, to be able to recover. Can I talk to some survivors for a minute? Can I talk to some people that's recovered from some things? Can I talk to a few people that's been through your share of ups and downs? But all I'm suggesting to you that if you came out of it before, I just believe that God has the ability, ability to bring you out of it again. Somebody shout bounce back. This is your season to bounce back. Your money's going to bounce back. Your family's going to bounce back. Your healing is going to bounce back. Everything that you've been praying for, this is your season to bounce back. Yeah, I know the first nine months was tough, but this is your month to bounce back. If you believe that this is your month to bounce back, would you give God a bounce back praise? Would you tell the devil that you thought you had me, but here I am. I bounce back in the name of Jesus. I am the Tori us. She had a radical pursuit. She had a resilient pursuit. But here's the thing I like about her. She had a relentless pursuit. Catch the text. Catch the text class. She said, drive. Go forward. And don't slack the pace. For me, unless I tell you. Drive. Go forward and don't slack. She directed the servant to not slack the pace. She says, this thing that I got going on in my life is too urgent for you to be slacking. This thing that I need to see God do in my life is too urgent for you to be slacking. I want to say to everybody that is streaming with me, the fourth quarter of this year is not for slackers. Can somebody type that into the comments? Tell somebody that you can't roll with me in this last quarter because the last quarter of this year is not for slackers. I can't connect the slackers. I can't hang with slackers. I can't do lunch with slackers because what God has for me is too urgent for me to miss it because I got connected to a slacker. Some of you are dating a slacker. Some of you are married to a 
slacker, but this is the season to speak to the slackers in your life. Tell them to pick up the pace. You either going to roll at the pace that we need to roll or I can't roll with you at all. Is there anybody in the building that know that you cannot afford the slack this last quarter of the year? She was relentless. That word relentless means to remain determined. Can I talk to some people that were just about ready to throw in the towel? Can I remind you that your Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. That means you got to be relentless. You got to remain determined. You can't show no abatement of focus, intensity, strength, our pace. In other words, what I'm saying to you in this last quarter of the year, you got to be more focused than you've been the rest of the year. You got to remain intense. You got to remain strong, knowing that God is getting ready to bring a change into your life. All I need for you to understand is that this woman was radical in her pursuit. She was resilient in her pursuit. And she was relentless in her pursuit. In other words, when you're relentless in your pursuit, you're kind of like Jacob when he wrestled with God. I refuse to let you go until you bless me. And Lord, we know that when Jacob finished wrestling, he walked the way with a limp. But I call him a relentless limper because he refused to let go until God blessed him. And I need to speak to some people. You may walk with a limp right now, but it's because you've been relentless with God. You refuse to give up on God. And yes, I know this woman thought her son was dead, but she believed that it was still well. And there ought to be some other people watching with me this Sunday morning. You still believe it's well. And it's all because you got this positional direction your inward disposition is one of the greatest determining factors of your life your inward disposition determines whether you're going to be happy or not your inward disposition determines whether you're going to feel overwhelmed or not all i'm saying to you this sunday morning is that your disposition will keep you headed in the right direction you need dispositional direction i'm thankful that this woman got to the man of God. Next week, we'll see what happens when she gets to the man of God. And I just believe that just as she received the miracle from God, that there's somebody streaming with me this Sunday morning. You are so close to your breakthrough. Don't you dare give up now. What God has for you, it is for you. Remember last week I told you it will happen, but it only happens at the appointed time. Get ready and maintain your dispositional direction. I want to pray for those that are watching this Sunday morning. You've been wrestling with the will of God. You've been trying to figure out, Lord, what's happening? Why is so much happening in my life? God, I feel completely overwhelmed. What are you doing? What are you trying to show me, God? And you've been wrestling. Your mind has been wrestling with God's will. And whenever your mind wrestles with God's will, it always causes you to feel overwhelmed. This Sunday, I want you to just tap out and say, God, I no longer want to wrestle with your will. I only want what you want for me. God, in those words that Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, I say those this morning, not my will, but let my will, let your will be done. Father God, I pray now for every person that's streaming, God, that you would bring them to the center of your will. Help them to understand that there is no such thing as your permissive will. You only have one will for their lives. And God, the best thing that they can do is ditch their will and get connected to your will. Father God, now I pray now that you make your will, your plans known to your people here on earth, Father God. I pray right now that you would take some of the sting of this feeling of being overwhelmed, God. I pray right now that you would teach your people, God, how to remain resilient how to hang on to their focus, how to hang on, God, and be relentless and keep their intensity. Father God, we want you to continue to bless us. You said according to your word in Psalm 61, verse 2, from the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to that tiring rock of safety. God, you are that rock of safety for us. So God, we pray now that you lead us to you, that rock of Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer of the world. When our heart is overwhelmed, God, we will come to you 
And God, we believe that you're able to sustain us and keep us from falling. God, we believe that this last quarter will be a phenomenal quarter for us. And God, we believe that we must have this positional direction. So God, we thank you right now for giving it to us. And God, we thank you for changing us. And we pray right now, God, that you will continue to bless us and keep us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You know, I'm thankful. And there are some people that are watching me right now. I want to say this last thing to you. God just dropped it into my spirit while I was praying. Some of you are willing to change everything except for your disposition. And the change that you're seeking is not going to happen until you change that first. So stop changing mates. Stop changing jobs. Stop making all of these other insignificant changes and change the most important thing. And that's your inward disposition. Maybe there's somebody that's watching today and says, you know what, Pastor, I need to change my attitude toward the church. I've talked about the church. I've talked about pastors. I said that all of them were no good. But, Pastor, I've been watching you for a while, and I'm beginning to see that God still has servants in the earth. I'm beginning to see my need for a local church. So I pray this Sunday morning that if you do not have a church home, why don't you consider making Global Impact your church home? You can connect with us. I don't care what city or country you live in. If God is calling you to this ministry, you can partner with us and we can do some amazing things. So if you do not have a church home, we invite you to connect with us, be it virtual, be it actually right here in the Henry County, Stockbridge, Georgia area. We would love to have you be a part of our fellowship. Do what it says on the screen. Join GICM. We would love to have you. If there's a person or persons that may be contemplating, hey, I need to be saved. I, I really need to get serious about my relationship with God. I see the way the world is changing. And I do need to remind somebody that Jesus died, he arose, and he's coming back again. You know, I need for you to understand that Jesus is coming back. He went away to prepare a place for a prepared people. It is our responsibility to be prepared when he comes. And you can do that simply by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible is clear. God so loved us that he gave us the very best thing he had. That was his only begotten son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer of the world. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Confess your sins. Confess your need for a Savior and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that in your heart and you will be saved. My brother and my sister, if you need to be saved, why don't you do what it says? Get saved and text the number on the screen. Allow us to minister to you. We want to welcome you into the body of Christ. Well, Saint, somebody ought to give God a few more emojis. Get into the comments and just clap. Some of you are still outside in the front yard praising. You left when I told you to go outside. You never made it back in. But I'm thankful that we got some people that are just radical in their pursuit. You're unorthodox. You're unusual. But most of all, you are unbothered. Well, listen, so many great things are happening around us. The Toys for Taco event was all the chain. Listen, I love my team. Shout out to Petrina Dorch, our local missions outreach coordinator. Did a fabulous job of getting out into the community, getting the word out. And we were blessed by you all bringing toys so that we can disseminate them to Connect and Henry, one of the great organizations in Henry County. Uh, Sister Barbara, we love you. They always do a great job, and we are honored to be able to partner with them. Well, listen, y'all already know. What time it is. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get myself together so that I can be. You know, I might wear a tuxedo to go vote this, this year. It's just that important. I'm going to post. I'm going to do something crazy. I may just post up at the, at the polls. Uh, my wife and I have never been camping. So let's go to Walmart, baby. Let's get us a tent and some snacks. Y'all know I got to have snacks. I can't do nothing without snacks. But I need to see you at the polls October 12th. It's on tomorrow, early vote. I am so hyped about early vote. I'm almost as hyped when I, that, that year I thought that we were going to win that Super Bowl, 28-3. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just that hyped. So don't let me down. Go vote. Get your peach. Post the peach. Tab me on it. It's not like I'm trying to be your boss and tell you what to do. I'm your pastor. And I need for you to show some accountability 
and some responsibility. So if I ask you to post the peach, you ain't so grown that you can't post your peach. You better post me in that peach. I need to see your peach. Go vote. Go make a difference. Complete your senses. Stop complaining about everything that you see on TV. You can't believe all the hype anyway. Remember, propaganda in a pandemic does nobody any good. Stay calm. Stay relaxed. Stay poised. We got this. Remember, the best is yet to come. I know you've been feeling overwhelmed, but I'm going to preach that overwhelming spirit off of you. You need some dispositional direction. i catch up with you next week. God bless you. Sisters and teaching the word